Hi there, I'm Captain Devin, and welcome to my journey in inshore fishing. My thing here is that fishing is more than just fishing, right? It, it, there's, there's, there's no artificial scheme. And what I do for a living is help people catch speckled trout or redfish or inshore species in general here in Louisiana using the number one thing they catch is, and that's, that's knowledge. You know, there's, there's all kinds of doohickeys and lures. Uh, electronics or, or whatever and they're good they're all tools in the toolbox some better than others but at, at the end of the day it's practical know-how that puts a fish in the boat so my thing here looking at the bigger picture fishing is more than just fishing is that if I can give them what it is that they need to get the thing it is that they're looking for whether it's a, a, a trip that makes memories that last a lifetime or getting their kid into fishing or just having a good weekend right just going out and catching some fish then that serves a bigger purpose that's, that's, that's what i want you to take away from this you know if you're here because you just want to see some fish get blasted in the jaw that's that's great you're in a good spot for that but there's there, there's a bigger picture here okay i'm not doing what i'm doing just because i enjoy fishing i do but there's a bigger picture. Just like, you know, anyone who joins the military, they don't join the military because they want to go play with guns. Okay, they're joining the military because they believe in something, uh, they believe in some kind of higher cause. Maybe they want to serve their country or, uh, you know, they're, or, or they, they want to go help people in, in, in times of need, like, uh, you know, when we had the, the big tsunami in 2004, you know, we sent our military to go do disaster relief and whatnot. The National Guard helps out times of disaster. So there's a bigger picture here. That's what I want you to take away from everything it is you see that we're gonna put out on YouTube. What we're gonna to do today is a learning trip. We're out of categories categorize fish and turtles into two different categories. There'd be learning, there'd be fishing. Fishing is when you gotta catch fish. Learning is when you go do your homework and there is no pressure to catch fish. Uh, I mean, I wanna catch fish today, don't get me wrong, but it's September, right? And, and speckled trout are starting to transition in. Some are already showing up on the inside. White trout, white trout. I can't speak English today. White shrimp are getting ready to go out on their migration to the Gulf of Mexico to go to spawn. It's almost like they're swapping spots with the speckled trout. Anyways, though, it's good to go out and see where there's gonna be a lot of white shrimp, where there's not gonna be a lot of white shrimp. I like to run the graph uh, just to go see what's out there and uh, go and get the lay of the land to kind of set fall up for success. And I'll get some pictures too. This whole Louisiana fishing blog thing, you gotta have pictures, man, you know, but pictures a thousand words. You gotta go out there and get it because it isn't like the stock photos for this. So today's like a homework learning kind of day and that's what we're going to we're going to go do but we're going to we're going to do some fishing too and uh just like in my fishing trip reviews i'll show you what it is i do and give you some good fishing advice and whatnot so we're seeing there's a lot to play with down there. And, uh, I mean, guys, this is the rod game. So you're going to have pretty much no matter whichever way you slice it. Let me change up the frequency here. That's mega imaging. It's kind of deep for that. Let's go back over to 800. So y'all can see there's a whole lot of something down there. Let me stretch that image out a little bit. Now it's really just a giant reef, so you're always going to see stuff like this here, but 
I mean, I've seen a lot of different shapes, a lot of different kinds of bait and whatnot. So, you know, just for uh, just for slits and giggles, let's uh, drop the trolling motor and throw a jig and see what happens. Be surprised how many fish can be here, people. Ah, oh, I just got thump bigger. Okay, all right, there we go. Man, I, you might have gotten that line jump. Uh, anyway, what I'm saying is that you could be surprised how many people be sitting here not catching anything, but they're just, they're just not fishing. All right, dude, that was a little something. So I don't go off what other people are doing. I mean, obviously there's like 30 boats in an area, okay. That might mean something's going on, but what I learned is usually by then, by the time everyone finds out, it's over. So that's why you want to go out and do days like today where you just kind of poke around and look and turn over stones and try and find fish before other people do. Or just find fish they just don't find at all or find a fish that they're sitting on top of. I got a little booger down there. Well, this is a trout. It's a freaking state record. I have a drum or a redfish. I did not bring the net. That's okay. I just want to see what it is. So guys, this is a six foot four inch medium power extra fast action casting rod with a hundred size reel and 10 pound fluorocarbon this fish ain't going nowhere yeah it's a redfish I don't know if I'm gonna I'm gonna try to put boat flip in on 10 pound I like to live life dangerously wear them out a little bit Alright, the skunk's out the boat. Redfish is in, skunk is out. And I uh, didn't pop the line. Hey girl. And they are, you know what, they've all, they're all females. But see, notice how that we're talking about. Seems like this fish is a little darker. It's like it lives here, like it's a marsh fish. That was not the cleanest release in the world. She definitely bunked her head on the way out. My bad. Man, that was, just saw the line started moving. I really gotta watch the line where it intersects with the water surface. I love that thump noise it makes. It's a nice fish. Not a single throwback yet. So guys, uh, you no, know I like my, my electronics and uh, you don't need them. They're a nice tool in the toolbox. And what's nice about them is that you can pull up into an area and before you fish it, you start idling your way in and you can see how much bait's in there. And if you recall earlier, we saw a whole lot of activity on the graph, right? We saw a lot of different shapes of fish too. So I think it's fish like this. I think it's that redfish we caught earlier, probably some drum, you know, sail cats, and all kinds of different bait balls too. Saw some stuff that looked like shrimp, some stuff that looked like pogies, uh, some other little smaller things, and uh, uh, definitely some bait balls that could have been like smaller juvenile pogies, or even honestly gizzard shad too. That's something a lot of people don't don't recognize. So uh, we're just sitting here working this with a jig and we've been putting together, we have not had a single throwback trout yet. And we've been putting together a nice little box of fish. So uh, we're just gonna keep doing this for a little bit longer and then we're gonna leave to go find where other trout are biting in different places. Guys, I wanna point out two things here. First off, remember I was talking about how much bait is down here, how many different kinds of fish we saw on the graph? Well, here's a perfect bite-sized croaker, especially when you're going fishing for big trout. 
uh, during the summertime out in Breton Sound, Chandelier Sound, etc. This is the bait you want to be using right here. Now I snagged them. I didn't, you know, buy them from the marina, then you know, put them backwards on my chicken with the matrix shed. Uh, no, I snagged them, and uh, that also lends credence to this setup that I use with 10 pound fluorocarbon, medium power, extra fast action rod, and a hundred size bait casting reel. It's how sensitive this rod and reel combo is, guys, that I was able to feel him either bite or brush up against it, set the hook and snag him. But I'm gonna put him back and wish him the best of luck and we're gonna get back to catching speckled trout and redfish. On the deck. Yeah, you're good, you're good. Guys, you did some nice trout. I know they're all Appreciate nice. Thank you. Hey, no problem. Like, see, it's awesome, bro. Yeah. At least this ride's hey, a little bit more worth it now. Look at, look at that white trout. Oh, that's, that's a white crazy. trout. That's crazy. I think. Hit Those like a freight train. Yeah, especially on big water, but yeah. they haven't. We haven't been really. I mean, they get big. I haven't ever seen one in water like this, honestly. Dude, that's crazy. Left and right. Yeah, we're picking a little bit. All right, guys. Uh, you said you don't have any jigs? Yeah, yeah. no. Oh, yeah, this. Guys, there's a thing here I want to want to point out real quick, and it's this whole thing with talking to other people on the water, acknowledging they're saying good morning, right, and uh, and being nice to each other. That that gentleman back there, his name's also Devin, which is pretty pretty cool of that. Cause no one's ever really named Devin. Uh, he recognized me from before, from earlier this year when I was fishing the rock dam, and uh, I was. I wasn't murdering him, but I was catching speckled trout and you know, him and his buddy pulled up in a canoe and I was like, hey guys, you know, come on over. You can get right next to me. You're in a canoe. You're not going to bother me. And more bait in the water is a better thing, right? And they pulled up and they caught some, they actually caught a limit of redfish. They had a good time. He recognized me from there and yeah, he's just like, oh, hey, you know, that, that's that guy that was nice to me. So you want to be nice to people and build bridges, not, not have this interpersonal this strange interpersonal like passive aggressiveness towards each other on the water oh he's getting too close to me you're too close buddy guys if you really are good at fishing and if you really are on the fish as long as that other boat isn't parked on top of the fish it doesn't matter if they're immediately to your left or right or even behind you in fact if, if anything is better because now you have somebody you can talk to and you know maybe they, they might have some extra jig heads or you can help them out right so there's no reason to be dicks to each other on the water. Just be cool to your brother, you know? That's awesome. Wow. So guys, uh, what we're doing here is we came out to some oyster leases, oyster reefs in East Biloxi Marsh and left all those trout redfish to come out here and nail a hardhead. <laughs> That's why you keep a flipper on the boat. <gasps> I know I have it in, in here somewhere. Where the hell did I put that damn flipper? Oh, yeah. Check that hook. All right. So the concept here is that we're going to drift these oyster reefs, oyster beds, looking for speckled trout. And uh, we've caught them out here fairly fairly recently and later in the day, but uh, it's good to see if they're still here or not. When we were fishing here and we were catching them, uh, actually just last week, there's lots of jumping shrimp here everywhere. And that's what you want to find. Guys, if y'all have been following Louisiana Fishing Blog, and especially if you've been like a member of LAC Elite and you've seen inshore fishing one on one and all that, the number one thing I harp is finding where all the fish are at. It does not matter what bait or line or 
brand name this or that or whatever it is you're going to use because if you get on a lot of fish they'll hit anything that hits the water and that's what you want to get on that's why i have these learning days and i come out here and run around and just poke my head around and try and figure out okay are they here are they there what's going on with no real need to catch fish or it's no real pressure to catch fish the irony is that once you let go of the fish and catch them doesn't matter anymore you start catching them a whole lot more now Something else, uh, if you haven't seen this blog post, go look for it at lafishblog.com slash blog. But it is a blog post titled, look for this one key future when you're going to fish oyster beds, oyster reefs here in Louisiana. So people say, hey, you just need to fish your oysters. That's all you got to do. You just got to get out there and fish your oysters, man. And then you go out there and you're like, holy crap, there's a lot. There's a lot of oysters out here. So which ones do you fish? You fish the ones that have fish on them, but you identify those, or at least you eliminate a lot of unproductive water by fishing the ones that have a whole lot of PVC pipes nailed down into the ground. And you want to do that because it keeps shrimp boats out. Just like, you know, the oyster man and the shrimp man don't always get along, right? That's because the oyster man puts down a whole bunch of cults oyster seed down here to grow more, more oysters. But when the shrimp man comes and drags his nets across it, he destroys them, he destroys the reef, he hurts the oysters so they're not good to harvest anymore. Well, that's not good for us inshore anglers either because that reef gets disturbed. And if you're a bait fish or a speckled trout, a black drum, whatever, would you want to live in a house that's periodically visited by a wrecking ball? Absolutely not. You would not want to do that. So they're going to stay around oyster beds that aren't disturbed on a regular basis or disturbed at all. All right. That's why it's going to find natural oyster beds, ones that aren't marked um, and that are not that are not fished, uh, not or not dredged rather. So those are the ones that I look for, and that's what we're fishing out here. You can see a whole picker row of them, and they're put down to keep the shrimp man out. All right, guys, so uh, we fished this for a little bit, and by a little bit, not even 10 minutes. And we're going to leave. We're going to leave because I don't see no shrimp jumping. I don't see no crazy bait that's on the graph. We didn't catch anything. So if not catch anything, and don't see any birds diving, shrimp jumping, nothing on the graph, I would just stick around. So just go somewhere else. That's what we're going to do. We're going to ride around. Maybe see some diving birds, and if that doesn't work out, we're going to punch deeper into the marsh where these white shrimps start migrating from and check some of those deeper holes and bends and bayous and whatnot and just see if anything's there. We don't have to catch any fish there, but if the bait's there, then you know the fish are eventually going to be there, especially as things start cooling off. So let's see what happens. And we found us a little popping cork bite that does not have catfish. Let's look to see what we got here. Mmm. You know, if this guy keeps, it's going to be close. And we're not keeping fish. But maybe there's more. That's definitely smaller than what we're catching at the rock dam goes to show that if you can get good with a jig, you don't have to go as far to catch quality fish. Those right down trout were a lot nicer than that one. But uh, maybe he's got buddies, so maybe there'll be more, more numbers, more quantity than quality. All right guys, so one thing I like to look for, one thing I really like to look for whenever I'm going through the marsh is the major highways. And if you, again, if you've been keeping up with the Louisiana Fishing Blog, you know that there, there's this theory uh it's more proof of fact than theory but that every kind of body of water in the marsh can be categorized as being like a sidewalk a street or a highway and by that i mean how much water it moves and by how much water it moves it's also by how much bait how much fish that it moves so you can see here on the graph you can see again just like what we saw at the at the uh, rock dam just all kinds of different returns and the dolphins are hanging out here, and I'm sure they're not hanging out here because they just like hanging out here. I'm pretty sure they're hanging out here because there's something to eat. So uh, it's 35 foot right here, 70 foot over there. Bet, bet you a whole lot of people don't know that about the Black Sea Marsh. It gets 70 foot deep out here. 
there is deep water in the marsh and uh, we're gonna fish it. We'll throw a jig and a drop shot and see what happens. I got exactly like one minute and 22 seconds if that to figure out there's trout at this spot or whatever's at this spot because there's a big old boat coming this way. It, it hammered hard. It, it hit like a trout, but now it's fighting like a something different, like a redder drum. Nope, nope, nope. And this is that same rod that's got 10 pound fluorocarbon, so I don't want to winch him in, but uh, I can still I can still boss him around. I just want to see what it is because whatever it is, there's a lot more of them down there. I'm hoping it's a 30 inch white trout. That would be amazing. That would be a world record. I don't know if I want to be remembered for catching the world's biggest white trout. Oh, it's gotta be a big honking sail cat, dude. You see the slyness already? You see the slyness already on the line? No. Come on, come up. There he is! Oh, big nasty thing. Tell you what, the Blux and Mars has not been kind to me. Not today. Guys, let's do a quick recap on today. So the whole purpose behind today was to go out and uh, take a look at the marsh, right? See what's going on out there. And uh, we covered a good deal of water. If I had a guess off the top of my head, at least 80 miles, right? Uh, so we fished everywhere from the, the rock dam all the way up to the top of the Blexi Marsh and took Lake Bourne, the east eastern shoreline of Lake Bourne on the way back just to see if there's any diving birds and we saw some shrimp boats and kind of get the idea as to where shrimp already are moving especially on that falling tide uh, so this gives me a good idea as to where to go find some some fish in the immediate future and then in the uh in the future just beyond that so that's good now beyond that i mean every time i roll out guys every time i go around you know the corner of a certain bayou or through uh, you know, an old lagoon or, or whatever, I can't help but remember what it was like five years ago, 10 years ago. The only constant in Louisiana is change. This whole place used to be covered in cypress trees. It probably looked a lot like what Bayou Segnet or Pearl River looks like now. You know, that's what it used to look like back in the day. I mean, you can see cypress tree stumps, uh, cypress tree stumps on sonar around Comfort Island. The only constant is change. And if we are to enjoy that change and make the most of it, we ourselves need to change. Um, it's no secret that the speckled trout population is hurting here in South Louisiana. And uh, I feel very strongly that the best part of a fishing trip, the whole reason we go out in the first place, is to catch. And I don't think that it is important to keep every single fish that we come across to step on to step on the 11.9 inch fish to make them 12 inches you know and i say that facetiously because that's a running joke in the realm of fish we're fishing here in south louisiana so i'm not telling you you have to throw fish back i mean guys we caught fish and, and gave them to you know those those nice guys those uh those nice gentlemen we ran into over at the rock dam there's nothing wrong with keeping fish but what i'm saying is that Take some time out to think about how it is that you can contribute to conserving this awesome thing that we have here in Louisiana. Now, after that, you know, with that being said, if you enjoyed watching this video on YouTube, if you enjoyed this little episode that we did, I need you to tell me. We need to know. Because if I don't get a good feedback on it, we're just not going to shoot another one. All right, the juice has to be worth the squeeze. If people don't enjoy it, then why would we film another one? But if y'all like it, okay, this is something you definitely want to see more of. 
then you have got to let us know. So like, subscribe if you want to see another one, and most importantly, tell us in the comments below. All right, that's it, guys. Tie lines.